Everybody, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And um, please go ahead and open your Bibles to the book. Ooh. The book of Luke, chapter 12. Uh, we'll go from verse 4 through 7. It's not long. I would recommend that you have your own Bible open, although we have it in the bulletin and also just uh, on the screen. And uh, while you're opening there, I would just like to welcome you all back to church. <laughs> so nice to see, uh, not faces, but masks but the uh, faces behind the masks. Uh, nice to see you all. And uh, we've been fellowshipping online and uh, on Zoom and on YouTube, but there's nothing like meeting together. Uh, yeah, face to face here. So, so happy to see you. Also, uh, want to welcome back, he's back in the, the baby room, um, Marshall. Yeah, he's back there. And he's just an old, old friend uh, from way back, so. Uh, he's in Higashi Hiroshima now, and just so glad to, to fellowship with him again. All right. Um, one more thing before we read our text today. Uh, just a quick announcement. Next week in this English service, we're going to have communion. And it's going to be, of course, different than the communion we've always had. Uh, it will be uh, B-Y-O-C, bring your own crackers, okay? Yeah, so, uh, and also bring your own juice as well. Um, you can bring grape juice or like real fruit of the vine, if you know what I mean, uh, but it's up to you. Unless you're driving. Yeah, unless you're driving. And so bring your own crackers and then bring your own juice pack. And uh, if, you're, if the Holy Spirit will lead you to be generous, bring extra to share with anyone who doesn't know about that. So, yeah. And I really, uh, am, I've been studying a little bit of, uh, on the, the communion and the, the Last Supper. And I really feel... Uh, it is so important for the church to, to continue that. It's Jesus' command to continue that. So uh, we follow Pastor Hiroshi's model uh, once a month. And uh, unfortunately, the Japanese service is not going to do it uh, next week, but they'll continue in July, I think. So, But I just, oh, the power is there. Uh, and so, uh, And speaking of power, today is Pentecost Sunday, uh, the, the church's birthday when the Holy Spirit descended on his church and filled the church with power from heaven to, to serve, love, give, and preach the gospel. And so my prayer for us today as we gather on Pentecost after being apart for so long is that uh, even the few of us would be so filled with the Holy Spirit that we would have power to serve and give and love and forgive and then preach the good news that Jesus saves. That's my prayer for today. Amen? Amen. All right. So uh, we're going to Luke chapter 12. We're going to read uh, four verses, verses 4 through 7, very short. Um, in the NIV and let's let's go ahead and read it together I tell you my friends do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more but I will show you whom you should fear fear him who after your body has been killed has authority to throw you into hell yes I tell you fear him are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head 
are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. The very words of our Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. This is the text which Pastor Hiroshi preached last week at the reopening service of the Japanese service. And I thought we ought to study and, and uh, meditate on this uh, scripture this week in the reopening of the English service. Um, twice it says, do not be afraid. Verse 4, do not be afraid. Verse 7, don't be afraid. And actually, there is one more time in this section of Luke. If you scroll down or look down further in your Bible to verse 32 of chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 33, again he says, Do not be afraid, little flock. Your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Three times in this chapter, verses 1 through 34, Jesus says, Do not be afraid. Right? Uh, by the way, something related to that, he says, Don't worry. And in fact, in verse 11, he says, Don't worry. In verse 22, he says, don't, do not worry. And related to that, he says, don't run after certain things. Don't set your heart on certain things. Are you seeing the picture here Jesus is giving in this section? Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Also, be on your guard. Pastor Hiroshi chose this scripture last week to preach about COVID-19. Church, there is a pestilence, a disease, a plague, a pandemic in our world. Something that can harm our health and even destroy our life. And Pastor Hiroshi's application was, don't worry. Don't be afraid. Be on your guard. Yes, do the shodok. The disinfection. Be on your guard. Wear the mask. Be on your guard. Touch elbows. That's it. Okay. But don't worry. And don't be afraid. Real quick. The context of this scripture. Jesus is saying, don't be afraid, not necessarily of pandemic. We can apply it to the pandemic. But first, let's apply the context. Jesus is talking about people who can kill you. And he's speaking to his disciples. There's a crowd gathered, chapter 12, verse 1. He sees the crowd, and they want healing. They want food. They want release. They, 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 they want something from Jesus. And they're pushing and pulling and grabbing, and they're trampling each other, the verse says. Jesus said, he sees the crowd, he sees the greed, he sees the selfishness, and he says, be on your guard against the, the spirit of the Pharisees. And then, instead of speaking to the crowd, Jesus speaks to his disciples. And he gives them a special message. And that's from verses 1 through 34. The message is, be on your guard, don't worry, and here our scripture today is don't be afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid of who? Well, verse 4, of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. Who are those? Who are those who can kill the body? He's not talking about God. Go down to verse, uh, excuse me, uh, go down to, to verse, I had it marked, and now it's gone. Uh, excuse me, verse 11. Verse 11. It's not up there. It's in your Bible. And in verse 11, he says, when you are brought before synagogues, rulers, and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves 
or what you will say. There's a connection. Don't worry about what you will say when you are speaking in front of authorities and rulers and synagogues. And do not be afraid of those rulers, authorities, and synagogues when they threaten to kill you. Don't be afraid of them. In fact, be afraid of someone else. Be afraid of God, who has the authority to throw you into, can I say it? Hell. I'll get to hell in just a moment. February 9th, 1555. On a cold afternoon in England, Gloucester, England, a pastor named John uh, Hooper, also known as Bishop John Hooper, he was set and tied on top of a pile of wood, ready to be burned. He was being burned because he was a Protestant Christian. And his judges gave him one last chance. They said, Bishop Hooper, if you say with your mouth and recant your Protestant faith in Jesus Christ, we will be merciful. And we will not burn you. We'll just kill you with the sword. <laughs> Stop protesting and being a Christian. And instead of the fire, we'll just cut your head off. What did John Hooper say? Pastor John Hooper, Bishop John Hooper. He says to his judges, life is sweet. Death is bitter. Eternal life is sweeter. Eternal death is more bitter. Bishop Hooper was saying, there is one who has more authority than you. I fear him more than I fear you. And you can destroy this body, but there is one who has greater authority. And that is whom I fear. See, hell? Hell? Really? I thought God was a God of love. I thought God was a, a forgiving, compassionate God. Why would he throw people? And, and by the way, it's, it's, it's May 31st, 2020. No one believes in hell. Really? 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 How can you preach hell? Well, I'm not preaching hell. Jesus is preaching hell. He preached hell. He spoke about hell. He used the word hell more than any other writer of the Bible. He's not afraid to talk about it. And the thing is, the people he was listening, the people listening to him had understood that. They understood there's more to this life than just this flesh and bone. There's more to this life than waking up, going to work, eating some food, and doing it again. There's more to this life than living and dying. There is eternity. There is a spiritual reality. And there is someone who has authority in the physical material realm and in the eternal spiritual realm. And Jesus is saying to his disciples, I'm saying this to comfort and encourage you. They're going to say, we're going to kill, we're going to destroy you. We send you to hell. We're gonna send you to your death. We're going to send you to torture and torment. We're going to send you to pain. And Jesus says, no, 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 don't worry. They have no authority. There is one who has the authority. Fear him. I was uh, texting, messaging, mes messenger, messaging, messaging of uh, an uh, old friend who I baptized here uh, a few years ago. 
and he is in a, a country where people are scared. The, the, the COVID virus is really uh, hurting a lot of people because there are a lot of poor people who cannot afford health care, masks, and they can't leave their house, so they can't work, so they can't eat and, and provide. So he's scared, and he's seeing the news that, you know, even if we reopen everything, uh, that could actually be more harm, the, the dainiha, the, the second wave. And, and then he's saying the news is there's more viruses, and COVID-19 is one of a, many kinds of viruses, and there could be new ones, and maybe worse. And then he, he's texting me, he says, Pastor, is this the rapture? Is this the end? Is this when, you know, the world ends completely? What would you, what would you answer? Yeah. I said, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. And then I said, are you ready? If this is the end, if this is the time when Jesus returns, if this is the time when all of this will go away, are you ready? Do you want Jesus to return? Do you want him to come back? Are you? And so his answer to me was, I don't know, I have a lot of sins, and there's many people I, I haven't forgiven yet. Yeah. So I had to say, you know, I hope Jesus comes back. But if he doesn't, and I die before he does, whether he comes back now or I die before he comes back, I'm going to stand before my judge. Mm -hmm. We all are going to stand before God. And what will you say then? So Jesus comes back. Chris, what do you have? What do you have? I'm bringing the new heavens and the new earth. I'm bringing the new Jerusalem. I am bringing heaven to earth. My kingdom has come. Chris, what do you have that I should give it to you? My prayer, brothers and sisters, my answer will be your answer. I will say, I have none but Jesus. That's all I have. I have nothing to offer, no righteousness of my own. No good. I've given, I've served, I've loved, I've been as nice and good as I can. I have nothing but Jesus and His blood, His righteousness. That's all I have. If that is your answer, you are ready. No. You do not have to be afraid. You have nothing to be afraid of. You have nothing to worry about if you have Jesus, okay? Now, uh, I, I need to close. So the question is this. I always say, I, I'm always trying to talk about Jesus and the cross and the blood, and I always say, do you know Jesus? Do you know God through Jesus? Do you know the salvation that is available to you? I'm not saying that today. I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to say, does God know you through Jesus? Does God see you clothed in his righteousness? Does God see you covered in the blood of his son? If your answer is yes, then you're ready. See, when Jesus talks about the sparrows, he says you're worth more than that. And when Jesus talks about the hair on your head, what is, when Jesus is saying that, he's saying, yes, God has authority to destroy you. But God has more love to save you. God has a hell. God has a punishment. God has a place for those who reject him. But God has provided a way to escape that place, a way to, to never have to worry about that place. 
and that is through Jesus. And why did God provide that? Because God loves us. You see, you start with fear, you end with love. You begin with the knowledge and the realization that there is a God. And yes, I will be afraid. Yes, I'm afraid. Yes, I fear Him. But when you know Him, and when He has entered your life, and He has transformed you, you don't fear Him. You love... Here, here's the thing. I, I, I'm just getting... Okay, give me five more minutes. I promise. I'm almost done. Five more. What is this fear? Christians... Christians fear God the way that gold fears fire. Christians are afraid of God the way gold should be afraid of, of fire. You see, you have wood, hay, and straw. And then you have gold, silver, and precious jewels. The wood is afraid of the fire because the wood, the fire can destroy the wood. Nothing's left, just ashes and dust. So if you're a piece of wood, you're afraid of the fire because that fire will destroy you. But if you're a piece of gold, you're not running from the fire. You're not fleeing in terror. You want to go to the fire because you know in the fire you will be purified. You will be sanctified. You will be made more pure. And that fire is something that it will be painful. It will be uncomfortable. It will be uh, 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 terrible for you. And Christians, we go through fire. But it is something that we... Job says it like this. Though he slay me, yet will I live. And I will come forth as gold. Job knew. Job knew. Why did Job know? Because he understood God loves me. And so his fire will not destroy, but purify me. God sees me as gold. And now I ask you, how does God see you? Jesus told his disciples, you you are more precious than a few birds. You're, all the hairs on your head are numbered. Meaning God, Isaiah said, because you are precious in my sight. Right? So Christian, follower of Jesus, disciple of our Lord. You have nothing to fear. Nothing to be afraid of. Sure, we're not going to be facing persecution of rulers, authority. Not in Japan. Okay. Others in other countries, other areas of the world, they're facing death at rulers and authorities. It's not us. But no matter what country, no matter what nationality, no matter what age, no matter what gender, there's the plague. There's the pandemic. You don't even need to fear that. Don't fear a pandemic that can, can, that can, destroy, that can, that can destroy your body. But fear Him. Amen. Fear Him. So. Um, so we come to him Pastor Hiroshi's message this morning was come home after you come home stay home but we come home to him we come home to Jesus our refuge and our strong tower we come home to Jesus who covers us with his blood and clothes us with his righteousness that's where we come and if you're a believer, if you've given your life to that, your attitude and your outlook should be transformed. Transformed. You come in to church, you sing a few songs, you hear a little message, but the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ transforms you. So we're going to reopen the country tomorrow. Back to work, back to school, back to the shops, back to business. We need to go out in the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. So when we reopen, we go out new creations, new beings, transformed by the power of Jesus Christ, fearing nothing, being on our guard. Yes, we're on our guard. 
but we don't fear it. We, we love, we serve, we give, we forgive, and we preach and we, we, we celebrate the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the power of salvation to anyone who believes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we rejoice. We rejoice that you are with us, that you fill us with your spirit. We rejoice in the great salvation that belongs to us through Jesus Christ our Lord, the resurrected King, seated at the right hand of the Father, ruling and reigning and sending us out to love and serve and give. And so, Father, uh, we pray together here in this room and many others who are online and around the world, Lord, we, we, we give ourselves to you as living sacrifices, God. And we thank you for the joy and the grace and the peace that you give to us uh, in exchange. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we all rise as we sing our closing song together? What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Once more. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you bring uh, your people into this house, filling it with your music and song. Father, we ask now that as we go, we, you, you would fill us with your spirit. That as we are filled, we would have the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of love and joy, peace and patience, kindness and goodness, gentleness and faithfulness and self-control. And for these good things, we will thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you all for coming today. Uh, please bring your own crackers and juice for communion next week. God bless you. Have a good week. Amen.